Hi everybody, Unboxing Tomorrow here with another quick installation, this time for packet analysis using Wireshark. I figured it would be a good addition to the severe weather early warning system that I put together not too long ago for my Raspberry Pi 3B+. However, I have no real reason to believe it won't also work on the newer, faster Raspberry Pi 4. Besides that, you're just going to need internet access and permission from your network administrator. I'm going to be installing the binary using the package manager, which is a few versions behind the most stable release. If you're looking to build it from source, that is outside the scope of this video. However, you can find a link in the description. As step one, we'll get started by first updating and upgrading packages that are already installed. This process can take a while, so while you're waiting, I must acknowledge Don's think tank for documenting this process back in 2015. It's been over five years since that article was published, so you can consider this video confirmation that it does still work. With everything updated, go ahead and install the Wireshark package using sudo apt-get install Wireshark. Partway through the installation, you will be asked if you want non-super users to be able to capture packets. From a cybersecurity standpoint, it's safer to say no to this and only grant it to trusted users. This is part of our next step. After the installation completes, we need to give this Raspberry Pi system a new user group, and I'm choosing to call it Wireshark. So we enter sudo group add Wireshark. Next, because I'm still using the default username of Pi, I will add the Pi account to that user group using sudo usermod-a-g Wireshark Pi. If you'd like a condensed list of all the terminal commands shown here, you can find them in the video description. Next, I will allow Wireshark group ownership of the resource called dumpcap using the change group ownership command. Next, I'm going to grant read and execute permissions so the Wireshark group can use the dumpcap using chmod 750 ensures that other random users will not have this ability. You can optionally verify this using the following command. Next, I'm going to configure the capabilities of the dumpcap file using the set capabilities command. Afterward, you can verify this change using get capabilities, which should return the following string. With that over with, log off or reboot the system. After that point, you should be able to run Wireshark by simply reopening the terminal and typing in Wireshark, all lowercase. Once it's up and running, you can start capturing by clicking the blue fin icon in the top left. Finally, you can optionally check your Wireshark version using Wireshark dash dash version. To get a newer version, you can visit the Wireshark webpage for more instructions. But before you go, consider liking and sharing the video. This helps me determine what people are interested in, and it helps the channel in general. There were a few minor warnings that I did notice while Wireshark was running. The first is libegl, which seems to be fairly common. According to pi3dgithub.io, this can happen if Mesa, which is a graphics stack for the Raspberry Pi, was ever installed with its own version of the libegl graphics libraries. According to the source, you can test if this is actually the case by entering these two commands. If the response contains files other than these two, then we have our explanation. The second warning is related to .png image files and the ICCP metadata that's attached. I don't have an immediate fix for either of these warnings, but they don't seem to be interfering either, so I'll leave further explanations to the Wireshark documentation. If you're like me and you're using software-defined radio or GNU radio for signal processing, then you might be happy to know that apparently you can bridge GNU radio to Wireshark for wireless packet analysis. If you found this useful, consider joining us on Patreon. The poll for December 2020 wants to know if you'd like to see the Electric Elements articles in video form. So far I've covered copper, silver, lithium, and zinc, and how these materials are used in components and systems that I feature here on a regular basis. Stay posted for more projects in electronics, robotics, and communication systems, and as always, have a great day.